So a good way to know whether you're with the right person is to think about whether I didn't feel the butterflies. So mm-hmm. would you recommend going on a second date? Try and really focus on the other person. So what are some common mistakes that people do during the initial phase? If you do have a traumatic past, it's a really good idea to that's another sort of red flag. And what is the psychology of attraction? Hello and welcome to Ask the Expert, a series where we talk about love, relationship and marriage and offer sage advice straight from Verona's relationship lab. So our guest today Anu is a relationship consultant at Verona. She handles hundreds of clients and helps them navigate their relationship journey. Thank you for joining us Anu. Thank you for having me. So our members already know you but can you please introduce yourself to our uh, viewers? Sure. So my name is Anu Day. I'm a lead relationship consultant at Verona and I have a background in psychology and social cognition and have worked for several years in India with counseling and therapy for both mental health as well as for relationships and individual therapy. So let's dive uh, straight in. If somebody wants to get into a serious long-term relationship, where does like where do they start? Well, this might sound counterintuitive, but I would say the first part of that would be in self-care, and that means getting yourself into the right mindset, prioritizing what you want out of the experience, and, you know, just committing to kind of learn and grow through the experience. And I think the second thing is um removing misconceptions that you have about romantic relationships. So we all have idealized you know versions of what we think it should be like and it's all important i suppose to be open to the experience and and that's good and bad sides of the experience and yeah i think those are the the top two tips i would offer people let's talk about first date if somebody is going for a first date what should they do to ease the nerves don't overthink it you know mm-hmm. try and let go of some of the fears you have about being judged by someone else about maybe some of your insecurities and and focus instead on you know your strengths what are the things that your friends love about you what is your family love about you and try and just go and sort of be yourself be your authentic self and think about how you talk to a friend and that's how you should be talking to someone on a date mm-hmm. um i think a lot of people really get their head into these situations and they overthink it and what happens is that you start second guessing everything you're saying you start becoming really paranoid about how the other person is judging you Mm-hmm. and um it can be a little difficult but the best way to do that or kind of alleviate your nerves is to you know try not to overthink of it and uh imagine that you're having a conversation with a friend right and do you have any psychological tips for just making a good first impression um so i think going back to not overthinking mm-hmm. uh things i think one of the best things you can do is try and really focus on the other person so One of the mistakes that a lot of us make is that we're so focused on making a good impression on ourselves that we forget to listen to what the other person is saying and give them time to explain stuff about their background to you. And I think the other thing is always try and find uh things that you have in common because that's a really good way of breaking the ice with people. If you have some mutual interests, it's always easier to talk about them, especially if you're passionate about that interest. Right. You talk about mistake. Like what are some common mistakes that people do during the initial phase? So I think one of the things is maybe being a little bit self-judgmental which causes mm-hmm. us to or having lower self-esteem. And what that does is it causes us to maybe project a version of ourselves that we think people want to see mm-hmm. rather than who we truly are. And so I think a really good tip is to try and be mindful and present when you're in those interactions even if they're on WhatsApp. Don't just kind of project an image of yourself that isn't authentic or is something that you think someone else wants to see because most of the time we'll eventually revert back to who we truly are and so you want to be as close to your real self as possible. So I think another common mistake is putting limitations on someone before you've met them. This is something that 
that comes from, I think, misconceptions around romantic relationships or even having a really idealistic view of what relationships are like. And the second is just about having unrealistic or sort of very irrational, um, non-negotiables. So you might think to yourself that, you know, I want someone only from this geographical region or I want someone who only has this type of car. And whilst Mm -hmm. that might sound silly, a lot of people do put these kind of limitations on themselves and you're kind of looking at things which in the long term and in a relationship are really going to become inconsequential Mm -hmm. Um, and and it's important to focus on the things that are going to be consequential. Mm -hmm. And what are these things? Like what should people look for? I mean, I think one of the most important things which is often neglected is having a really strong friendship. I guess we get a little derailed or maybe even blindsided when we're with someone really attractive and someone that we find attractive Mm -hmm. and yes attraction is totally important in romantic relationships but so is having a really strong friendship and actually relationships that last are usually built on a really strong friendship so a good way to know whether you're with the right person is to think about whether you'd miss the friendship more than the relationship Mm -hmm. because often it's the friendship that really sustains so i think another thing that you should look for is a similarity in values Um, that's really important because your true values are again things that if they don't align can cause conflict later Mm -hmm. in a relationship. And this also happens with certain types of cultural differences or differences in how someone relates to their family. So those are the kinds of things that you want to be thinking about when you're looking for Mm -hmm. someone long term. But I think on a more fundamental level, it's really important to have a lot of trust and respect in a relationship and also really good communication. And I think trust and respect are often things that we give them less value than they actually should have when we're especially in the initial parts of dating. So Anu, suppose I went on a date and the date was just average. I didn't feel the butterflies. So Mm -hmm. would you recommend going on a second date? It depends on whether that first thing I was talking about, how strong that was. If it was a date where you weren't really feeling butterflies and you kind of got on with the person, but, you know, if they were outside of that context, maybe you wouldn't talk to them that much, then probably don't go on the second date. But if, on the other hand, you got on with the other person really, really well, you could see them yourself, like, hanging out with them as a friend, then maybe it is an idea to go on that second date because romantic feelings and attraction can grow. Mm -hmm. It's not like everyone has lightning bolt moments when they first see, you know, someone on a first date or even on several dates. So yeah, that would be the distinction. Mm -hmm. Because in the beginning, I barely know this person. So how do I see if I'm compatible with this person or not? So in the beginning, it's difficult to sort of understand whether you're definitely going to be compatible with them, right? Mm -hmm. Especially on a first first date or even a second date but usually in a first date what you're looking for is does this person seem to have similar values to me you know do we have similar interests in terms of our lifestyle are we similarly committed to our careers you know do we have fairly similar you know values in terms of our family because those are the things that are potentially going to be um, difficulties later on in a relationship. And just to give you an example of that, if you are, you know, quite focused on work and work is important to you and the other person feels that work is not as important to them mm-hmm. or that, you know, they prefer a work-life balance that's really healthy, then that is going to be an issue as you progress through that relationship. So mm-hmm. you should have similar um, kind of views on those sorts of things. Mm-hmm. So what are some biggest challenges that people face while looking for their life partner? I think one of the biggest challenges is lack of social skills and communication. And whilst Mm. that might seem very obvious and obviously people communicate well. In relationships, that communication is quite different. And the thing is that our brains are kind of really wired into social signals. And one of the things that research has shown recently is that because we spend so much time online, we're losing some of those skills. And so oftentimes when people interact on dates, they don't really know how to behave and they don't often exhibit some of the social skills that our brains are kind of wired to pick up on. And how that comes across to the other person is either lack of interest or 
that the person is disengaged. And a really obvious example of that would be, you know, if you get a text on your phone and you're in conversation with someone and you look at the text rather than leave the text for five minutes, let the Mm -hmm. person finish talking. And what are some red flags that one should look out for in the initial phase? I think one of the biggest ones is someone who seems like they are not uh, giving you enough respect or if they are trying to change who you are. So if you are experiencing someone who's questioning you about your decisions or your behavior, trying to maybe see if you change your behavior, then Mm -hmm. that is usually a red flag. Another one is someone that may seem overly critical of you or judgmental, which I think I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, these kinds of traits can be signs that the person either is not a very good, I would say, not very good in interpersonal relationships. Another thing is someone who's extremely emotional, but I would say emotional in a way that is kind of not in alignment with the situation. So Mm -hmm. for example, if you don't text someone back as soon as they text you and they start getting really upset and emotional about it, even though it's a very small thing and you think that they're kind of overreacting, that's another sort of red flag. And I would say that on a completely different sort of dimension, someone who seems like their decision-making is going to be very much influenced either by a previous trauma Mm -hmm. or other people in their life, so other influences, then that can sometimes not be a very good situation because the person's decision-making is not their own. It's either being directed or influenced by by like a past bad relationship Mm -hmm. or, you know, some other trauma or that they're very influenced by other people. And so you'd never really have an authentic relationship with that person. So how does one stop replicating harmful patterns from the past relationship? That's a really good question. So I think one thing which is probably the most difficult to do is to kind of um, spend some time with yourself trying to move on from that experience. Because until you do that, it actually isn't very fair to even go back into dating and, and giving other people because you are giving other people the opportunity to date you because what we tend to do is we tend to project past relationships onto others and especially if they're not completely resolved Mm -hmm. so for example if you had a really bad breakup and someone treated you in a specific way say they lied to you you might then start projecting that onto another person and not really even be aware that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And so if you do have a traumatic past, it's a really good idea to spend some time trying to understand that relationship a bit better, maybe even get support from someone like a counselor to kind of let go of some of those feelings before you go into dating again, which mm-hmm. which is often contrary to advice that we'll get from our friends. They'll be like, get back in there. Mm-hmm. You know, you just need to find someone new when actually the first step is just sort of resolving those feelings within yourself. Right. Um, so because of the dating apps, people have so many choices. Yes. Why do you think one should only focus on one person at a time? Okay, so there's actually a lot of psychology research that's been done on this, um, mm-hmm. especially with the rise of dating apps. And probably the most famous is The Paradox of Choice, which was written by Barry Schwartz, and I think around 2004. And it basically, the research in his book indicates that people tend to be less happy and less satisfied when they have more choices. Mm-hmm. It also can lead to something called decision fatigue, which is essentially the fear because you have so much choice that your decision is the wrong one. And it also is that there's so many choices that you can't decide between them. And so what we really encourage is that you give people the chance and actually look at just one person at a time. Because with obviously dating apps and social media, we've gotten less and less good at making the right decisions unless we actually take time to focus upon them. Um, Mm. So this is something else that's proven in psychology is that if you don't give your brain enough time and the cognitive energy into something, you're not necessarily gonna make the right decision. And Mm. I'm sure we've, we've all done that on dating apps. And what is the psychology of attraction? Yeah, that's another really good question. And a lot of it is evolutionary, right? So mm-hmm. we have a whole aspect of our behavior, which is just about kind of, it's it's called mating behavior, but it's essentially how we have romantic relationships. And a lot of that, as I mentioned in the kind of, I think in one of your earlier questions is to do with our social skills. Um, and so there are two things. I mean, there is a physical attraction component, mm-hmm. 
But that physical attraction component tends to be just have like one uh, one goal, which is reproduction. Mm -hmm. Whereas long term partnership tends to have another goal, which is somebody that is going to be your friend and is going to share resources with you. And that's still very much how current, I would say, psychology works in terms of attraction. And just to show you that in action, it's one of the reasons that you'll find that in an environment like a club, for example, that women will tend to be more aggressive to other women and men will tend to be more aggressive to other men because Mm -hmm. there's so much competition. So if somebody hasn't been lucky in love, what's your word of advice for them? So I think the most important thing is to continue having hope and focus on yourself because the only person stopping you from finding that person is actually yourself. And so all you need to do is kind of think about some of the things we've discussed today and go out there and kind of commit to have fun in the process. You know, try not to overthink it. Think of it as this amazing experiment and this journey that you're gonna do on yourself to find the perfect person for you who absolutely is out there for you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Anu, for all that information. I'm pretty sure our audience has learned so much from you today. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions for Anu, you can comment your questions down below. Like, comment and share this video. Keep watching Verona for more such insightful content. Verona, matchmaking reimagined.